Welcome back, guys. Thank you again for staying with us for our final match, which I think is going to be pretty badass. Yeah. It's Clyde against Hong and yeah. Prime. And Clyde, I think, actually, this guy's probably going to win the whole tournament in my eyes. Uh, he's going up against Hongan, who is just such a top-level Protoss. He's been dismantling nerds all along the way. In fact, he beat OGS Suzanne and OGS Xenio. He's just slapping Zergs down left and right. Can he take out a Terran, though? Yeah, it's it's kind of like um, like Inca, where Inca ended up with PvP the whole way through. Yeah. The uh, the tournament, this guy's had like basically ZVP yeah. for at least the later significant part. Um we don't have the stats from back when it was like 2,000 people or whatever playing at the tournament. But this guy, very talented, but can he play this different matchup now? That's going to be the big question. Because we know Clyde can play it, man. He already yeah. took out Davit last round and Gerard Prime. Well, that's two different races, neither of which are Protoss. But we know he can play it because he practices with uh, Kisu yeah, that's all true. the time. So it's S -S -S going to be... KS. Kisu, man. The player formerly known as Tester, but has now changed his name to SS. But those are his initials, in case you're wondering. Um, look, I think it's going to be a tough game. We, I really don't know much about Hunger Prime's, um, you know, his PVT. His, his PVT. I don't know what to expect, but I do know that Clyde is so solid. Uh, I don't know if this is going to be as one-sided um, as we predicted the previous match we did with uh, any pro. Yeah, um, yeah. I guess Ensnare. Two top players, but Ensnare showing that he is a different level. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, no question there. We saw it. It was it was pretty sick, man. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't think that any pro could get tooled that hard by anyone. but That was pretty happened. brutal. And here he is. Clyde. Every week. Clyde always looks, look, it always looks like he has narcolepsy, like he's passing yeah. out in his chair. He's like, oh, I'm in the StarCraft tournament. Oh, he's passed out again. <laughs> um, just going over his game plan in his head. You've got to get in the zone. Um... And if you're not in the zone, you're not going to play well. It doesn't matter how smart you are. It doesn't matter how, uh, you know, how, how much talent you have. If you can't concentrate and do the strategies you tried to perfect in the booth, you can't do it. And, Clyde uh, saying, I want that money. I want that money. <laughs> I want that money so bad. It's so much uh, money. <laughs> Don Giselle. Um, you know, I I think that Clyde is such a favorite in this tournament. Every time I watch him play, I become more of a fan. He's... He's so solid. It's like the type of StarCraft that I personally love to see. A lot of people love the flashy stuff, the nukes, you know, the cutesy builds, the abusing little map frame pieces. Clyde is just like, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop harasses on me. I'm gonna harass a little bit. I'm gonna macro, and I'm gonna roll you over. And I love that style. I have a lot of respect to players that take that approach. Yeah, he, he seems to weather his opponent a, a little bit more even than, um, uh, excuse me, SSKS, Kisu. Uh, the player formerly known as Tester. Very, very impressive. Now, here's Hung and Prime. This guy gives interviews quite well, by the way. I love his interviews. I love interviewing this guy, and I'm afraid that I might not be able to do that today, Casey. Uh, I know. It's going to be tough. I want to see this guy get as far as possible. The Prime coach is here in the studio today. Uh, pretty bummed out with um, any pro losing. Yeah. So he's really hoping. He's really rooting for Hung to get up through here. That's right. And I think he this might be our best interviewee. Yeah, it's it's my favorite. Well, actually, the maybe, maybe him, and, him and him and David. <laughs> David might actually be our best interview. David, yeah, was he, that, he's got that, a that, special place in my heart. That's right. That was was it your idea that if David wins another game, you should ask him. David, can you just tell us a joke, please? <laughs> yeah. Imagine that interview so question to be tell me like, a joke, uh, please. <laughs> oh my! But um, that would be good. You know, Hungan Prime's uh, PBZ impressed me. More Stellar. than almost anybody's out there. So he could have very good PVT. Uh, you know, this game's so new, the, the competitive scene's so new that we don't we don't know too much about these guys with StarCraft 2. We're still all learning. Um, let's take a look at the maps now. And the first map's going to be Lost Temple, followed up by Scrap Station, and the third set on Metalopolis. As you can see, the maps they excluded... Desert Oasis and Blistering Sands there for Clyde. And Hunger Prime also eliminating Blistering Sands. And as you can see, Delta Quadrant. And, you know, Blistering Sands, a lot of players don't like that because of the backdoor possibilities. Can be used by both races in this matchup. Yeah. Um, if you think you're better than your opponent, you probably should not have Blistering Sands. Yeah, it can uh, be a little bit pool. weird with those, those destructible rocks. In fact... It's one of the very few maps that the Destructible Rocks make such a big difference in early game. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, I love how they uh, Blizzard implemented that kind of stuff. And like the Zell mm-hmm. Naga watchtowers and stuff. It's such an improvement oh, yeah. in StarCraft. I really like that. It's, yeah. It's, High it's grass really cool. and, and Zell oh, yeah, watchtowers yeah. are... I think that that's they like make such the game an improvement so much richer than yeah. it would be otherwise. So. so I remember when I first saw the Zell Naga watchtower, I was like, oh, I don't know... If I like yeah. this like structure that you know I can use, but actually now that I play, I'm like, oh no, this is great. Mm. This really enhances. At first, I thought yeah. you know it, it, maybe it's too good. You know, if you have your opponent in a contain, you kind of get so much map presence yeah. by having those. But there's a lot of times where you're kind of battling over who has it. There's little side games going on within the real game yeah. where you're trying to trying to take that position. Yeah, so, it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah, so, it's it's pretty awesome. And we're gonna see some of that probably here on Lost Temple. Positions matter a lot in this matchup uh, on Lost Temple. Uh, you know, if you're close, you can do different builds, and if you're far away, and we're going to start this. Let's go. Over here in the center, or upper center right, is... And, of course, over here at the far left, so they are very far apart from each other, we have... Woman Prime! <laughs> I love the Street Fighter voice. Uh, yeah. <laughs> by the way, we do understand that the graphics were a bit... Um, not the graphics, I should say. The gamma was a bit too low for some of you guys at home. So we have turned that up. We hope that makes things easier to see. Yeah, I think that it definitely is easier to see for me, Tasteless. I could see much easier, actually. And that's what matters. That was a great right? idea, whoever thought of that. This, mm. I guess we had the and gamma too low on this uh, PC. Check this out. Clyde right Whoa. now with 45 APM. Must be wearing a very heavy watch. Oh, there oh, we go. Oh, no, it shot up to 300. <laughs> okay. He took his watch off right there. Probably spiked down. He had to flex his wrist real fast, do a little wrist spin. Depot put over here. Clyde. Not exactly the most intimidating name. <laughs> no, it's a... I mean, it's like a good name, but an ID, no. No, 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 no. I don't know. It's a bad is ID. Is that actually his English name? Do you know? I don't know. I was just wondering if I'll that ask him, him if he wins. Somebody asked that on the forums. That's who is Clyde? <laughs> what significance does the word Clyde have to you, good sir? You guys are supposed to pick the questions, but I think it's a pretty good question because I'm kind of curious about that. And if you notice, Hungan Prime went to both the Zelnaga Watchtowers right away. See if he could spot a worker. He just barely missed Clyde's SCB. Mm. It's pretty cool to brush by those, have certain uh, brushes worked into your build order to catch SCVs, to catch proxy gates, things like that. Because they are just ever so slightly out of the way. The probe is soon going to see what Clyde's up to. Clyde at making two Marines. That makes it much easier to get rid of the probe right away. And he actually backs away uh, without even going in there. Hungan Prime. Hungan really wants that probe to stay alive. Yeah. Figures, I'm not going to see anything. You're just going to kill my probe and then make your tech. That's what May it as well seems save like. it. Yeah, that's what it seems like with most of these good Terran players. Mm. Hungan Prime getting a Zealot out here early for micro purposes. And here's Hungan Prime controlling the Zelnaga Watchtower. Zelnaga is so important. They really give you great uh, radius of vision. You can see those Marines coming from so far away. The problem is Marines are so fast at shooting in this game and walking and, you know, the cooldown between those two that if you leave a probe below the ramp like people used to in StarCraft 1, oftentimes a Marine will actually kill it before the probe can actually get away. So keeping yeah. it at the watchtower is actually a good safety measure against that. Nice micro here by Hungan. He is actually going to chase that out before a stalker is even out. Even though he's actually going sentry first, that's interesting. And for a fast robo. Marines coming out to claim those watchtowers. As I was saying, you know, the game within the game of controlling watchtowers early and often. Reaper being made, as we see in the production tab. So, uh, in fact, a second Reaper being made as well. Now, one thing you could do with right the Reaper... Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt your artosis. No, that's okay. I'm just such a manner guy. I'm just trying to please, bring the manner. Please, uh, continue. He can use the Reaper to scout it to the main. The probe now chased away. So Protoss once again in the dark. Clyde doing a great job of controlling the center. Now you can see he did reveal the Reaper. So he's going to go ahead and put the uh, sentry over here. He wants to catch it while it's on the way mm. up. 
But that's also a little bit risky. You might be able to kill one of those sentries if you jump up there and notice quite quickly. You know what's interesting is that Clyde is so confident. All he's doing is just checking around the map for any hidden buildings while he just goes for a quick expand and gets the barracks up. You know, that's a safe play for a good Terran player. You do not want a Void Ray or something being stuck. And here we go, a Reaper going into the main base. Takes a peek. That's all I needed to see was a robotics facility. Yep. And, uh, you know, he tried to put that on some side that wouldn't be seen as easily, but Reaper always finds a way, Jason. You know what's smart about this build? He may have actually tried to engage in the front like this to show the Reaper, because that's going to put these units here and here. Mm. And there's definitely not going to be right units right over here. So that's one way you can slip in. Very true. Whereas if you don't show the Reaper at all, they might be at the ramp and be able to stop that scout a little bit easier. Clyde, you're so Clyde. good. Clyde. <laughs> Like Cut out, Clyde. Stop that. You're so good. One of my favorite things to do while watching Clyde is to attribute every single thing that happens in the game, luck or not, to him being good. <laughs> the Observer now. Going to get an idea. You see the Clyde's actually ahead. Clyde expanded quite quickly. But a very quick Nexus as well from Hongan. Yeah. I'm already seeing a difference between Hongan's play and any pro's play. So oh, I'm going to go ahead different. and I'm going to remove what I dubbed as the number one Protoss and Prime any pro for quite some time. And uh, from here on, Hongun replaces. Sorry, any pro. He doesn't watch our stream. <laughs> he doesn't? He does. Well, he that's should. Dumb. We're so good. Tell him to get a premium package. <laughs> it's only $20. It's only $20, bucks, guys. Uh, again, Reaper just taking peeks here. Reaper being used to scout. Just get oh, an idea. Oh, hasn't seen the Nexus. Ready? Yeah, he actually doesn't even know. Yeah. Interesting. I think he can safely assume by how those units are set up. Oh, Clyde. Clyde knows. <laughs> Don't worry. He doesn't need to see it to know it's there. Now, this is what we've seen from some of the higher level Protosses. They're more willing to get additional observers. Yeah. And because let's face it, if he gets a Banshee or something like that, and he hit it somewhere, mm. and he gets in your base, it's a long walk home to get back here. It is a long walk home. And it's a long fly home as well. Even it as is. the observer flies. We have a nice little army moving out here for Clyde. And whether this is a real attack or some little pressure that we were talking about before, it's a very good timing to move out. The army of Protoss is not that large right now. He scans. And in fact, he's sending the Reaper into the main base. Maybe he'll be able to draw oh. some of the units over. He's going to make it look like he's going to go for the probes. Uh, but, of course, the Protoss already has one Stalker back there. He doesn't budge. Clyde just trying to bait him out so he can Clyde. then... Oh, Clyde. Here he goes. Oh, that was smart. He only stims one to make it look... Oh! Nice. Hongan with the beautiful force fields catches a bunch of Clyde's units, and Clyde decides, wow, maybe I have met someone who is worth my medal. Could he possibly kill the Clyde? No. I don't know, man. Now, I want to point out how high level the play was here with this. He stimmed one mar marauder mm. to make it. But, it, you know, if you hear the stim sound, you're not looking. You're going to think, oh, my God, they've all stimmed. Might actually retreat. Oh, excuse me. I, I thought I only stimmed one marauder. Man, I think he actually stimmed to run away. I think you you might be right Oh, that was that, it, the, uh, I think the first stim. That's what I'm thinking of. Yeah. I was like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm totally actually, tricky. Like, nice little drop coming over now by Clyde. On the side, only one uh, stalker in there. Might be able to take out some pylons, but no, it looks like he might go for the probes. He's brought a lot of marines, which are very good against oh, oh, wow! I like this move. Can he get it though? No. no. And he doesn't try. He doesn't try to trade. He realizes, okay, the proper move here is to run away and not lose everything. Good move there by Clyde. Clyde. <laughs> Clyde is so good. Clyde's man. so good. Uh, more barracks here. So he's going to stay heavy infantry. He's getting the reactor. He'll probably swap the starport out with the reactor. Interestingly enough, a hung and prime is stuck with Immortals for a while. You know, he was doing a really good job of that. Oh, and we got another drop on the way over here. We have right now. Uh, I, I like the tech pattern we see by Protoss. He's getting Thermal Lance. He's getting plus one. He is getting the Twilight Council. So he's just going to have all the solid upgrades that you do need as a Protoss player. Now here we go. The drop coming up. Quite. Sees a lot of units in there, but unloading, he might have enough to do a lot of damage anyways. Oh, look at this. This is bad by Hong, and he's going to lose a lot of units in here that he does not want to lose right now. And Clyde, will he get away without losing the dropship? And 
he does. He manages to get out of there. Clyde, <laughs> you're so good. He's he did a lot of damage to the army up there. Backed out. He suffered minor losses, and I think he's gonna drop again and gonna try to take out the structure or the forge. I don't know if it's gonna work or not. And will he get rid of the robotic support bay? Really making uh, Hong and run all over the place. And he does, in fact, get it. Picks up a few units. Will he get the dropship out of here? And he does. He is doing so much damage. I mean, Hongen is actually sitting here. Let me explain this to you people. Hongen is sitting here on two bases, okay? He should be able to defend this stuff. But Clyde is all over the place, drawing the units back and forth, using scans to plan out these drops. It is great play. And Hongen is just running around like a chicken with his head cut off. Oh, Clyde. This is just such high-level play. I'm so impressed. All right, Destructible Rocks. Going to be taken out. He's done the damage he needs to do. He's forcing him to remake this. The staple unit in late game PVT to Colossus out of commission. Meanwhile, that's going to allow his Viking count to get ahead. We do have a ghost over here. His his unit comp right now is really quite great. He's he's switched over to so many Vikings at this point. You know, he's not overmade his ghosts. He's only got two ghosts right now. You think and, he's gonna uh, go for a bust? He he very well he's may. He's debating it. A couple well placed EMPs there, as well as Vikings flanking. You know, no force fields, and how's Hongan gonna hold this? <laughs> oh, oh, nice angle here. Such a good one. Here come the ghosts. EMP's going on. Stim Marine Marauder, and this is not looking good, but Clyde not bringing in the Vikings. There they go, and it looks like uh, this is a dire place for Hanga. Clyde is just superior. He's I dropping mean, his Vikings down. Yeah, he's amazing play by Clyde. GG. Wow. I am in awe of that play. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. my God. Um, Clyde wins that game, a well-deserved win. Hung of Prime is really good. Don't get me wrong, but I mean, he just could not deal Hung with it. is a great that player. Hurts. Yeah. Um, and, you know, a lot of people might be like, wow, these guys are actually uh, really talking about how great Clyde is too much. But I really want you guys to fully understand what I am watching here. Because I am watching on a second monitor along with Tasteless. So I'm seeing every little thing going on. Yeah. Clyde is actually unbelievably good. He's the best player I've seen. His play is actually, I mean, uh, Kisu held off some amazing uh, rushes and everything and right. played really great, but Clyde is, he's actually playing so phenomenally. I've not seen any Terran so good. play anywhere near this good. And I w I've been watching Into the Rainbow a lot lately. Yeah. And Clyde is actually yeah. just playing a much sol more solid game. After that game, I don't know. I think he might be slightly better than Into the Rainbow. I really can't I wait. haven't seen a Terran put up this quality. That was just Really good yeah. play back there. Um, I mean, and Hongun, I mean, Hongun Prime knew it was coming for him. You know, he knew that there was going to be drop yeah. play. He had observers. He saw. He puts his army there, and it's like he's still just out. He got peeled apart. He, he yeah, didn't he put the right units in the right places. Clyde so saw impressive. it. So uh, impressive. You know, every attack was just right. His unit transitions. Yeah. His Mac was always spot on. Yeah. He had the right units. He was expanding at the right time. So it's just good, what man. I'm watching here is actually amazing. This is how you play Terran. This yeah. people need to catch up to Clyde so this game can move forward. Because yeah, this guy's this guy, light years ahead. Yeah, I mean, let's see. Maybe Hungum Prime will play better this time. But I mean, looking at that previous game, I mean, Clyde had him every step of the way. He was so high level, so good. How how much do we we say high level a lot? <laughs> it's true. It really was uh, a very let's call it Clyde level. It's Clyde level. Clyde level play, it's man. Clyde. Level play. That was horrible. Thank you. That was terrible, Tasteless. Take it back. That you, was not a Clyde level joke. Back. You take that back. <laughs> I write my own jokes. The countdown started. Let's get ready for an awesome game.